your daughter needs a father? Think about that for a minute. It's true, right? Okay, first of all, you've got biology, right? That we all know how babies are made, right? So you have to have a mother, you have to have a father. Nobody gets born without a mother and a father. But beyond that, every girl needs a father, a father figure, someone in her life who takes an active and intentional role. And now a lot of girls are lucky and their biological dad is there in some way, shape, or form, and, and he's the father in her life. But even for those girls who aren't lucky enough to have a father in her life, they still need a dad. They need a surrogate father, someone who will step up, someone who will take that role. Well, why? Because the fact is, now my dad just talked to you about how boys and girls are different, and we agreed about that, right? Boys and girls really are different. Well, if boys and girls are different, then mothers and fathers are different too. And because of that, every daughter needs a father. Now let me explain to you something. Let me, I'm going to tell you a little bit about my family. So in my house, I'm the mother. My husband is the father. We have our two roles. Now when we're planning a vacation, which we actually are planning a vacation right now, we're getting ready to go to Orlando to visit family and go to Disney World and go to the beach and yada, 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 the whole thing. So when we're planning a vacation, I'm worried about what clothes do we need to bring? Did we pack the sunscreen? Where's everybody going to sleep? What are we going to eat? I'm worried about all those basic details. Here's what my husband's worried about. Play, 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 play. And what does play, 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 play mean? Well, you know, day one, we're going to go to Disneyland and at Disney, or Disney World, sorry, we're in Florida. Disney World. And what are we going to do at Disney World? We're going to go on this ride and that ride, and it's going to go in this order. And if we go to the back of the park first, then the lines will be shorter. And then the next day, we're going to go to Legoland. And at Legoland, we're going to go on this ride and that ride, and we can't miss this. And then the next day, we're going to go out to the beach. And at the beach, we're going to do this and that. And oh, by the way, I found this great group on for a crocodile trip. Never mind you that we have really little kids, and I don't know if they're going to be safe doing this. But whatever, fun, fun, fun. Because his whole thing is, if we're gonna go on a vacation, why would we do the same things we do at home? Why would we just eat, sleep, go to the bathroom? But my thing is, look, if the kids don't get enough sleep, aren't well fed, and if they need to use a bathroom, which my kids are seven and under, so if you know little kids, you know when you need a bathroom, you need a bathroom now. And it doesn't matter if the line is really short on this ride right now, if my youngest needs to use the bathroom, I need to go to the bathroom. So my husband and I, we kind of butt heads about this a little bit, right? You know, we fight and we work it out. But in the end, if I'm being a mother and I'm taking care of all the basic needs and he's being a father and he makes sure we are having so much fun, amping it up, we're on vacation, at the end of the day now, we're a family, right? And you, we all know how family vacations go. There's fights, there's accidents, somebody's going to get hurt, somebody's going to get sunburned, everybody's going to be tired, but at the end, no matter how sunburned we are or tired, no matter who has a scraped knee or whatever, we all had a great time and we will remember this vacation for the rest of our lives. Why? Because I was there mothering, making sure that all of the basic needs were met so that we could have a whole bunch of fun playing and doing all the stuff that my husband plans. That's just one of the reasons why every daughter needs a father. But let's talk about this and the uniqueness of fathers. What makes fathers so special? Well, you know, there's kind of, we talked about this gender role thing, right? That we, with the women's movement, we tried to eradicate gender roles and we thought, oh, it doesn't really matter. And so with parenting, we did a similar thing. Well, parenting is parenting. It doesn't really matter if it's a mother or a father as long as you have good parenting. Well, that's sort of true. And there are some basic things that are just good parenting skills. And some of the things we're gonna talk about today, honestly, a mom could do the same things and it would be beneficial. But there's something about fathers and about fathering, and there's something about fathering a daughter that's different. It just is. It works differently. It works better. So let's talk about some of the ways that fathers are different than mothers and the impact that fathers can have on their daughters. Now, there have been some really great studies about the impact that fathers can have on their daughters, and there are several things that dads do just really, really well. They focus on how to solve problems instead of complaining. They encourage independence and self-reliance. They teach their daughters to take responsibility for their mistakes. They get their daughters to try new and difficult things. 
They encourage their daughters to try again after failing, and they motivate their daughters to re reach their full potential. So let's think about that. Solve problems, independence, self-reliance, responsibility. Try, try again, full potential. How does that look like in practice? I have a younger sister, and she has a passion for swimming. She loves to swim, and when she was in about sixth grade, she decided that swimming was gonna be her entire life. She was gonna join the swim team competitively. She was gonna make it her whole life. Well, if you know anything about competitive swimming, it is a very, very, very challenging sport. It's an individual sport rather than a team sport, so it takes an incredible amount of discipline. It also takes just ridiculous amounts of time in the pool practicing, just swimming laps, swimming laps, swimming laps. On top of that, because you're swimming so many laps, because you're burning so many calories, you're eating all the time. When you're not swimming, you're eating. Remember Michael Phelps in the Olympics and they talked about he ate like 12,000 calories a day? Now, I don't think my sister ever ate 12,000 calories a day, but I do remember when she was swimming, it was just eating, 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 eating continually. And it was funny, when she stopped swimming, she had to learn not to eat all the time because she got so used to having to eat all the time. But anyways, when she was in the middle of all that, when she started swimming for her high school swim team, it was a big challenge because it's not like basketball or football where if the team goes to state, you go to state. Well, in swimming in this individual sport, each person qualifies for their individual event. And so my sister tried and tried and tried. She wanted to make it to state. She wanted to qualify. And you have to get a qualifying time before you even get the right to compete at the state tournament. So it was finally her senior year. And you know, she had tried and, and struggled and, and she couldn't even swim at our high school because we went to a small private school that didn't have swimming. So she had to go over to this other school and it was so much work and she wanted to quit. But again and again and again, my dad would get out there, he'd have the stopwatch and he'd say, Ruth, you can do this, you can do this, I believe in you. Keep trying, keep going, and he would motivate her. He would encourage her to find creative ways to, to solve whatever problem it was, whether it was a transportation problem or an eating problem or a swimming problem or whatever it was. And he encouraged her, just keep going, keep trying. And eventually, she did it. She qualified for state. And it was such a big achievement. He made it so that she could reach her full potential because she had the ability to get there. She was able to compete to the level that she could be at the state tournament. And the really neat thing that happened for her was that her team actually won the state tournament that year because the way school teams work is that you compete in your individual events and based on the results of that, then one team becomes the champion as a team. Well, had she not worked so hard and achieved everything that she achieved, had my dad not impacted her in that way and encouraged her to keep trying and keep going, she never would have had that experience. She, she could have been there, but she wouldn't have been in her suit, a part of the team competing with them. And that was such an amazing experience that she would have missed out on had she not had my dad. Because I'm telling you right now, it wasn't my mom that got her to the state tournament. My mom loves her. My mom cooked a lot of her meals to keep her going. My mom drove her to the practices. I drove her to practices. But my mom and I didn't get her there. My dad did. The other thing that dads do is influence their daughters. Now, let's think about this for a minute. What are some things that you would not want your daughter to do, especially your teenage daughter? Mm, let's think about it. Mm, being overly dependent on men, that'd probably be something bad. Getting pregnant as a teenager, yeah, that's the one that from the minute you find out it's a girl, you're hoping she doesn't get pregnant as a teenager, right? You don't want her to start abusing drugs or alcohol. That Don't want that to happen. And, and you probably aren't going to want her to get arrested, right? That's just not the call you want to get sometime in the middle of the night. Oh, Dad, by the way, I'm in jail. Can you come pick me up? Well, statistics show that if a dad is active and involved in his daughter's life, all four of those things are way, way, way less likely to happen. Probably not going to get pregnant as a teen. Probably not going to be addicted to drugs and alcohol. Probably won't be overly dependent on men. And she's probably not going to get arrested. So that's a good thing, right? Be involved, be active as a dad. All this bad stuff isn't going to happen. But I don't really like to focus on negatives. I'm one of those people, I like to see the positive side. So let's think about some things that you might want to happen positively in her life. How about being successful in school? What dad doesn't want that for his daughter? Being successful at work, another good thing. Being self-reliant, being self-confident. Well, again, 
Studies have shown that if you're active and intentional about having a relationship with your daughter, chances are those four things are going to happen. So you're going to avoid all that bad, ugh, icky stuff that nobody wants to deal with, that she doesn't want to deal with, that you don't want her to deal with. And on the flip side, all this good stuff that you hope will happen will happen. And really, what it takes is you influencing her by being involved in her life on a regular basis. And it's just really important for dads to step up in this way. And the truth is that if a dad steps up and has a relationship with his daughter, which, think about this for a minute. Do you really know if your daughter wants to have a relationship with you? I've talked to a lot of dads who, who come up to me and they say, Ellen, you know, I know you're telling me I need to have a relationship with my daughter, but she doesn't want to have a relationship with me. I've tried. She doesn't want it, especially teenage daughters. And we'll talk about that later. Trust me. We'll get into the teenage years. But the truth is, it doesn't matter if she's five or 50. I have yet to meet a single woman, and I mean it, a single woman who doesn't want to have a relationship with their dad. Now, they don't want to have a relationship with a dad who's not going to be there for her, who's not going to be supportive, who's not going to be the right dad. But if dad's willing to step up, if dad's willing to do the work, if dad's willing to try, and guys, I know you think, oh, so I have to be perfect. No, no, <laughs> no. If you're willing to try about this much, she wants to have a relationship with you. If you come towards her, she'll come towards you. And it's this work together thing. Girls just want relationships with their dads. They just do. It's, you know, I was reading an article recently talking about this, the whole thing of the women's movement and how women have changed women's roles at work, women's roles at home. You want to know the one relationship that hasn't changed? It doesn't matter if you're talking about the 1700s, the 1800s, the 1900s today. Father, daughter. Hasn't changed. It's, it's archaic. It really is. Girls want to be daddy's little girl. They just do. They want to have a relationship with dad. They look to dad for approval. And if you do the work, if you take an active role in your daughter's life, if you influence her and you impact her, she's going to grow up to be this strong, capable, capable independent, self-reliant woman. And you know what? She's going to look at you with those big eyes and she's going to say, dad, you know what? You just, you're the world's greatest dad, and I am so fortunate to have you in my life. 